Hello, this is a presentation uh, on case 1b of the method of undetermined coefficients. So we are trying to solve this um, non-homogeneous differential equation uh, with an exponential forcing term, uh, ke to the alpha x. So the standard solution method is to first find the general solution of the complementary equation and then find a particular solution of the non-homogeneous equation. And once you have these two, you use the principle of superposition, meaning you just add the complementary solution and the particular solution, and that gives you your general solution of the non-homogeneous equation. So let's do an example. Uh, this is the equation 2 second derivative of y plus 5 first derivative of y plus 2y equals to 7 times the exponential of negative 2x. So as usual, the first step is to identify the terms in the equation. So on the left, we have our standard linear second order differential operator with coefficients a equal 2, b equal 5, and c equal 2. And on the right-hand side, we have our forcing term f of x, which is 7 times e to the power negative 2x. So let's start the solution process. The first thing to do is to write the complementary solution, which we get by setting the right-hand side of the equation to 0. So we get a homogeneous equation that we already know how to solve. So we solve that equation, we find the characteristic equations, the zeros, and so on and so forth. And that gives you the complementary solution c1 e to the minus 1 half of x plus c2 e to the minus 2x. So that's our complementary solution. Okay, it's the solution of the complementary equation. Now we make the all-important check uh, to see what's the form of the candidate solution for the particular solution of the homogene non-homogeneous equation. And what we have to do is to check if the forcing term is a solution of the complementary equation. So here is the forcing term, and here is the complementary solution. And we have to check if the forcing term can be written as a particular example uh, for, of solution for the complementary equation. And notice here that uh, uh, the exponential term in the forcing term has exponent minus 2x, and that's one of the terms in the complementary solution. That means that we can set c1 equal to 0 and c2 equal to 7, okay, and then the complementary solution becomes exactly the same as the forcing term. Okay, so the forcing term is a solution of the complementary equation in this case. And um, so that's the special case. And what you have to do when this happens is uh, normally the candidate solution has exactly the same form as the forcing term. But in this case, the case in which the forcing term is an example of a complementary solution, uh, you have to add an extra factor of x. Okay, and that's actually a common theme in this method. Whenever that happens, whenever uh, the forcing term is a solution of the complementary equation, we add an extra factor of x in the candidate solution. But now, once you have the candidate solution, everything goes in the usual way. So that's your candidate solution, yp of x equals to ax, times e to the power minus 2x. And um, you compute the derivatives. So that's the first derivative. Now, uh, you have to use the product rule to compute this derivative. Okay. And uh, the other thing that's important from a practical point of view is that you have to simplify as much as possible the derivatives. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, here in the slide, it's already in simplified form. Okay, and one good thing to do is to always factor this exponential term when we compute these derivatives. 
Now the second derivative, if you do the analogous simplification, this is what you get. Okay, so now we have the function itself, the first derivative and the second derivative. So we are ready to plug this uh, into the differential equation. So there is our non-homogeneous equation, the equation we want to solve. There are my derivatives, and so I have to now plug in my derivatives into the differential equation. And I get a formula that's not too nice, okay. Uh, the left-hand side is a little bit more complicated uh, than in the previous case, uh, but still uh, it's the same process. You just have to be more careful because you have terms that are slightly more complicated. Uh, and now comes uh, where is the major mathematical work. Uh, you have to simplify the left-hand side as much as you can. Okay, so one thing that you can notice is that you have a common factor a, okay, and you have the common factor e to the minus 2x. So those two can be factored out. And then I have a bunch of terms that have a bunch of constants and the variable x. So I have to carefully simplify that by gathering uh, the terms with the same power of x. The usual way you simplify a polynomial expression. So uh, it's kind of horrible looking, uh, but this is you get, if you look in the middle line uh, in, the, in this computation, you see that in the left you have that term 5 minus 8, that's just a negative 3, okay? Uh, but the other term in parentheses, it's 2 minus 10 plus 8, and notice that you get a 0 there. So the term that multiplies x becomes 0. That has to always happen in this particular case. Okay, the x has to disappear, and we are going to understand why when we continue the computation. So actually, after all settles down, you get quite a simple expression. You get minus 3a to the minus 2x. Okay, so the left-hand side is minus 3a times the exponential of minus 2x. So that's the left-hand side. The right-hand side is just the forcing term. So I get this simple equation, and remember, at this stage, you always have to get a simple equation that you can uh, somehow solve easily. Okay. Now, uh, uh, how do you do that? How do you solve this equation? Okay, so here is the equation again that we have to solve. And notice that we have the same exponential term on both sides, so we, ca we can get rid of it. So we just multiply both sides of the equation by e to the 2x are equivalent to divide by e to the minus 2x. And you get an equation minus 3a equal to 7. And notice now that the variable x has completely disappeared from my equation. And again, that's essential in the method of undetermined coefficients. You always have to somehow get rid of all the terms with x using valid mathematical simplifications. Okay. So now it's a simple matter of solving this, and we get a equals to negative 7 thirds. So that's the coefficient a in my particular solution. So my particular solution will be minus 7 thirds times x e to the minus 2x. Okay, don't forget here that you have that extra term x in the particular solution, so that term has to appear here again. Don't forget it. And then we are basically done. We have our complementary solution that we computed earlier. We have the particular solution that we just found. And then we use the method of superposition to just write the general solution as the sum of these two functions. Okay. Um, so here is a summary of the method. So what we need is the general solution of the complementary solution equation, I'm sorry, and the particular solution of the non-homogeneous equation. The forcing term is an exponential, k e to the alpha x, but in this case, it is a solution of the complementary equation. And so what we have to do, the candidate particular solution has an extra factor x. Okay, so uh, the forcing term is k e to the alpha x, but the candidate particular solution is a times x e to the alpha x. OK, 
okay? Uh, and then uh, after you find the particular solution, you use the principle of superposition to find the general solution. So again, uh, that's it. Thank you very much. And as always, have fun solving differential equations.